I was a, a pack a day smoker, then I was drinking maybe a carton of beer a week. I hit 90 kilos, 95 at one point, and uh, couldn't, couldn't see my own toes. I came back from a, um, about a, a 15k bike ride, and I thought that was huge at the time. And uh, look, looked in the mirror and went, I look like an Easter egg. That was the trigger for, for me to, to start exercising a lot more seriously. I never thought I'd get into triathlon. I was, um, as I said, I was a cyclist. I, I dabbled in a little bit of running and I, I couldn't swim to save my life. I think my first swim that I ever did was 250 metres. You know, it took me about four hours. Um, my very first triathlon, which I did in, uh, in about 2013, uh, was a, a 300 metre swim. And for me, that was absolutely terrifying. But Ben made rapid progression. I did my first half Ironman in 2014. For me, I wanted to go six hours. I ended up going five hours 15. Um, surprised myself in, in all three legs. Um, and from then the bug hit because I went, okay, 5.15, I know that I'm, I'm potentially capable of going sub five. And then I've kept on, on going from there. You know, even doing the half iron man, I remember seeing people with the M dot tattoo and, and going, wow, that, you know, w these, these people are gods, you know, to me. They're, you know, that's the pinnacle of the sport. You know, Hawaii is the, is the hometown. It's, it's the birthplace and that's, that's the Holy Grail. But the Holy Grail was closer than Ben thought. I did my first Ironman in the now um, unfortunately extinct Melbourne. And I thought I was in, in the ballpark of about 12 hours for, for that. It was a beautiful course. Uh, it's, it's, it's a shame that it's not around anymore, but uh, I went to a 10.37. And surprisingly enough, I qualified for uh, Kona in my division that, that year. Unfortunately, I couldn't go due to work commitments. Disappointing, but Ben then qualified for Kona 2016 after racing at CAM. I came second in my division. Um, and ended up accepting the slot to, to Kona and, and when I did it yep, last year, yeah. And how did you get on a Kona? I actually had a shocker of a day. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a number of different things. I actually got a, a bit of a knee injury just before uh, Ironman Cairns and I, I could limp through Cairns, but unfortunately it, it's, it delayed me a lot with my running. Um, in, that, in, in that period as well, I had the blessing of my daughter, Isabella, who, who came along and she, uh, she was seven weeks old when we traveled to Kona. So I think that took, the focus away from Kona, uh, from, from the actual uh, race day prep and, and, and execution. So at Kona, I ended up going at 12.11 uh, or thereabouts. It was an incredibly tough day in my mind, easily the hardest race I've ever done. And a lot of athletes say that, and I, I can understand now why. But for, for me, I was, I was probably about five to seven kilos overweight. You know, I was, I was rocking with my dad bod. Um, and it was very intimidating. It, it really was. And, uh, not performing to the best of my ability left a splinter under my skin somewhere. Mm. And I won't feel content now until I go back and, and prove my worth over there. So Unfinished business then for you with Kona? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll be back. I'll be back. Ben's family commitments combined with a demanding job in aviation means, for the time being at least, he's concentrating on shorter course competitions. So at the moment I'm, I'm doing the Olympic distance, so the 1.5 kilometre swim, the 40k ride and the 10k run and uh, honestly it's a distance that scares me. Uh, it's, it's terrifying because the top athletes get over the line and they collapse because they've left it all out there. Yeah. The Olympic distance racing is just go from, from the, the moment that the gun goes off. Two hours of really hurting yourself, so it's a very different sort of race uh, aspect and training. I would hazard a guess at least 80% of my running is done wow. uh, on Zwift. For me, the run training's always been tough, especially through winter. Um, get up in the dark, go home in the dark, train in the dark. It's, it's, it's really tough to get that motivation. You know, dogs chasing you, cars, you know, cold, wet, damp, whatever. For me, I can train in the same kit all year round. You know, if, if it's too cold, I'll put a heater on. If it's too hot, I'll put a fan on. I can dial in the numbers on the treadmill and that will reflect on Zwift, whether it's you know, to within, within point X of a kilometre per hour, but we can still see those surges, we can still look at the heart rate, we can still use the, the data that I'm gathering from that. The other thing that I I've really like about it is that I can wake up at four o'clock in the morning, I can be running by 10 past four, I'm done, I'm here, I can shower. With 80% of his running and currently 100% of his cycling done inside, does Ben ever miss the great outdoors? Yeah, sometimes I do. On a, on a beautiful day, uh, you, you kind of go, you know what, I'd, I'd love to be able to, to get outside and, and do that. But I never thought I'd say this, but my number one priority is my family. My daughter really changed my perspective. And, you know, as we said, I, I don't get paid to do triathlons. So unfortunately, I'm always going to have to work. You know, I'd love to be paid. That'd be brilliant. I don't like going into things 
half cocked. For example, if I'm gonna get down to our local bike track, that's a 30 minute drive, plus the prep, plus loading the bike in and all that sort of stuff. Some days, yes, I, I would much rather be out drinking in the sunshine and, and chilling out with a couple of friends. But what I'm gaining from sacrificing that mm. is just so worth it in, at the end of the day. I'm 100% solo athlete. That's the way I race. You know, in, in non-drafting events, you can't race with anybody else. So I'm starting to train more and more the way that I would race. But is the quality as high? The proof is in the numbers. I did a, an Olympic distance triathlon in, in 2014. And I did that in two hours and 41 minutes. And that was all outdoor training. I did a race up in Townsville at the, in the middle of August and I went a 208 with a mechanical on the bike. Wow. That was 100% of indoor training. Wow. Potentially a better athlete. And yeah, I agree there is a balance for bike handling skills, etc., etc. But for those big sets, the big weeks where you're building the endurance, muscular strength and endurance sort of stuff, I don't think it can be matched.